Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Today we're gonna to be doing something that we actually haven't ever done before, which is some phone software videos. Yay! Yay! I'm excited, actually, just so you know. So with Google I.O. taking place last week, as well as the launch of the 3A from them, there was also some software updates that they brought out for Android Q with their Beta 3 setup. With, thankfully, since I have a Pixel 2 XL, I was able to get into the Android Q Beta and find out what are some of the best features that we can expect in this Android Q update over what we have in Android Pie. And so we compiled this list of the top five features that you can expect with Android Q. So let's start off with my favorite, of course, is the system-wide dark mode. It is the best part of Android Q, bar none. Obviously, there have been some themes that you could get that would allow for dark mode to happen on your Android device, but now it happens on stock Android and makes it look oh so gorgeous. So you do this just by going to display settings and enabling it there, dark mode versus light theme mode. However, when you do that, there are a few things that don't change into dark mode of primary importance is the Google Assistant, especially since at least the way I have my home screen set up, the Google Assistant is down there at the very bottom of the screen all the time and with a giant white search bar just sitting there, not quite what you want to have. So in order to fix that, Android Q still has that built in here. So you just have to go into developer options and then enable the option that says override for Stark and then bam, you have a dark mode Google Assistant and it looks so, so beautiful. Obviously not everything is perfect in the dark mode. As you can see on my home screen, the Gmail app, just the icon is white and that's frustrating. Hopefully that they'll rectify this in upcoming uh, updates to Android Q so that we would have dark mode even on the home screen. And then there's things like WhatsApp, when you go into like a WhatsApp chat, like in our group messages, it just, it looks kind of funny. It's not the it's not the greatest implementation of dark mode, but it's exciting that it's now native on Android Q and you can have it for most of the things that are on your device. And one of the better features of the dark mode is that it not only turns Google apps into the dark equivalent, but it also affects other apps that have white backgrounds such as Instagram. Now you have a dark mode on Instagram or the YouTube Creator Studio. Now it's dark mode there as well, whereas previously there was no way of doing it. Then the second favorite option that I have is that they've simply Wi-Fi sharing. So my friends, in case you forgot the Wi-Fi password, you can actually go ahead and just enable a Wi-Fi sharing setup on the Wi-Fi settings app where you can either use a QR code or it will display the password for you right there. This is very helpful in cases where let's say you're at work and you've been connected to the Wi-Fi for ages and then somebody new joins and then you can't actually tell them what the password is because you forgot. Bam, it's right there right now and you can have access to it pretty easily. So it's as simple as just going to the Wi-Fi options, clicking on the network that you're a part of, and then hit share. And then it just has me verify my identity to make sure that it's me who's trying to share that stuff in case it's some nefarious person who's trying to steal my Wi-Fi. You no longer have to worry about that. Then number three, the thing that actually is kind of nice for me, especially since I just switched back to my Pixel 2 XL after being on the iPhone XR for a while, is that there are updated gestures that allow you to modify how you actually interact interact with your device. So instead of having the icons at the bottom for home, back, and then the app switching mode, they've made it more, I guess, in line with how the iOS system actually works, where you swipe up when you're in an app to go home, and then you hold the swipe up to actually access the app tray, and then you can just do a whole bunch of stuff there. You swipe up twice while you're in an app, and then bam, there's your app tray instead of the home, and it allows you to just have more seamless uh, transition. Let's, if you're trying to bring somebody over from the Apple ecosystem into an Android phone, there, you can actually make it so that they their transition experience isn't hard with software buttons on the home screen. Number four, this one I actually haven't been able to get working for me for whatever reason. It's just probably something to do with the beta, but there are new smart replies that are being rolled out for most different messaging services out there where when you're in the notification, there's a drop down that allows you to just do some sort of AI machine learning predicted text response to whatever has been messaged to you. 
I tried to use it as an example for this video with Reese demanding his money and I got, I got no smart replies. So apparently mine isn't working at this moment, but you can expect that to be coming out to Android Q when it is out of beta and actually rolls out. And then number five is something that hasn't been in Android for the longest time. Obviously, in order to save battery, there is a battery saver mode that you could schedule to turn on, but then when you would plug in your phone, it wouldn't ever turn off, but no longer. Finally, a battery saver off feature once your phone reaches a certain percentage of charge. That at this moment, the default is 90%, so when your phone's mostly charged, then it'll turn off battery saver, which I suppose is okay. I would prefer something a little less. I'd like once my battery is 50% full, I don't need to go back on battery saver because like I usually am on battery saver at 15% and not anything higher than that. And even that, like I could go down to 10% and then do that. Anyways, if you were ever annoyed at the fact that it never turned off when you were charging your phone and you had to do it manually, no longer. It can be scheduled in the system. There are also a couple of other features that are gonna be rolled out in Android Q, but not really something that I wanna make into the top five list, such as there's gonna be new notification controls, but I found those more annoying than anything because when I'm trying to swipe a notification away, it's like, hey, hey, like the Microsoft paperclip, it's just asking you, do you wanna change your notification settings with this? It really just, piss me off more than anything. And then there's also supposed to be an update that allows uh, when you're driving with a Pixel device, it'll detect if you've been in a car crash based on a quick stopping, but that hasn't been rolled out as of yet. And then there's also supposed to be some other system updates with the AR feature in Google Maps that's gonna be using on Pixel devices. There are some Pixel specific features that are gonna be rolled out, and then there are other features that are less significant, but my top five, system-wide dark mode, simplified Wi-Fi sharing, new gesture controls, and smart replies, which I really want, it's just not working on mine, and then also a new auto off battery saver. So those are the top five features that I have for Android Q. Let me know, are you excited about any of these? Do some of them just kind of disappoint you since you've had them on your Android device for a while since you've like installed it yourself. I'm just excited that it, they're all coming natively since Android Q doesn't seem to be a huge overhaul, but just kind of minor tweaks and upgrades. I'm really appreciative of it. Let me hear from you down in the comments what your thoughts on Android Q are. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed us taking a look at the Android stuff, because I kind of did. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of our hot news stuff. I'm Brett with the Hot News Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Bye.